Hello, hello, hello again. Hello, hiya. Um, it's the first Thursday of the month. It's October. Yeah, finally. Fin well, finally? Do you mean finally? Christmas is coming. Yesterday it was August. <laughs> Well, for some people. <laughs> what happened to September? It, it goes so fast. It completely right? disappeared. I hope you are having a very, very good um, autumnal uh, introduction. That's my favourite word in the English language. Which word? Autumnal. Autumnal. You have to say it like a poet. Autumnal. It's such a lovely <laughs> autumnal day. Um, yeah, it's my all-time favourite uh, English word. Um, the Americans don't get to use it though. Autumnal. No. How well, come? Because autumn for the Americans is the fall. Because You're the right. leaves are falling down. Yeah, yeah. I love the way Americans make everything sound like a game show. <laughs> like we have zebra crossing in England. They've got a crosswalk. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's play crosswalk. Will the old lady get across the road? Um, yeah, everything sounds like a game show in American it's English. True. But anyway, hello, hello, how are you? Everything okay? We had some thumbs up, we got some smiley faces, and we have some hearts. Hearts, hearts for you as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, all your thumbs up, all your likes, uh, all of these things, they really, really do help. Um, but October, we're back at school. Uh, we're getting yeah. underway. Um, Martin will hold far just on. Ju just, just one second. He was ready to hold up the next hold, sheet. Yeah. He's excited. He has this new job. Yes. Martin will hold up the piece of paper, and that's his new job. He and he's going to be excited Come on. about it. I know. Um, but before then, show? because we've gone back to school, um, I just thought, have the kids started to do this again? Yeah. You, what uh, did, do you mean? did you do it? I don't when you do so. the, the the bottle flip thing, when you got it, it, you have to throw it, and it lands back down. On, on top like that. Did, did you do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you've been yeah. stuck in the office. <laughs> yeah. She's been stuck in the office talking oh, to uh, teachers, to um, to head teachers, uh, to schools, and uh, we've got some exciting news about um, some franchise partners, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so you hadn't been doing the bottle toss thing? No, no. no? Really. Well, so you just talk to them. I'm going to mm -hmm. just play the bottle no, toss game. No, don't, Steve. No? Come on, we are Sorry. here for a live stream. Uh, yes, Get back to yeah. our topic. But, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, sort well, of, uh, back you know. to school, but back to work now, Steve. I've lost my fidget spinner. <laughs> I'll leave it here for you in it's the end of life and I'll get it back to you. <laughs> that was, thank you very much. It's, you can't not play with these things. Have you played with one? No, really. Get, we've got to get you out of the office. There you go. This is my gift to you. Please okay. take it away. Okay. Take it away. Give it a spin though. You know. <laughs> I think editor's going to play, be playing with the fidget spinner for about the next 10 to 15 minutes. Can I have it? Can I have it? But that was it. All the kids, it was the bottle toss, it was the fidget spinner. I, I'm looking forward to knowing what is going to be the next big the next craze. Time, right. um, as soon as you know uh, what your kids are doing, send us a message, or maybe I'll put it into a Stephen Maggie clip. Right. Could be there. Uh, there we go. Could be there. Are we joined by uh, anybody online? Who have we got? Hello from Warsaw. Hello to you. That's uh, there are some kids using our books there. They're really love Stephen Maggie. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, we got well uh, Maggie here. Uh, Bob. Bob's looking like he's getting a bit drunk though. He's yeah. falling down, <laughs> Bob. Because actually. Oh, Sure. There's something under there, so it's uh, he's help it's helping him stand up. Okay, no, Maybe. no. Okay, <laughs> Bob's sleepy, very very sleepy. Go to sleep, Bob. It's been a very very long and stressful summer for me and Bob the Blob. <laughs> Was we've, it? We've been recording a lot, so he is tired. He needs uh, hey, come on. He needs some rest. So yeah, they're using our books in Warsaw, which is fantastic. Uh, please do um, send us some of your videos. Um, you can post them up on uh, our Facebook wall. Martin finds them and uh, he tries to um, pop put one up. Uh, I think it's every Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and it's wonderful to see. You might think that, you know, okay, we don't want to know, but it really does give us great motivation to actually sort of, uh, motivation to keep no, going. Oh, there goes Bob. Let's just put him down on the floor. Yeah. There we go. Okay, <laughs> night, night, Bob. Um, I hope that's not a metaphor for our book sales. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, no, okay, I think book sales have been that I can see. So, uh, yeah, so hello to you in uh, Warsaw and to all the kids that use our book. Uh, we got Havu. is greeting us. And he's saying hi to Maggie. Hello! <laughs> not now, we're doing a live stream, Maggie. One and hello from Apulia from Italy. Fantastic, that's yes. great stuff. Yeah, we've got uh, some stuff going on in, in Italy. Uh, who's that? That's Osdor. Osdor Siro. Wow, that sounds like a name from Game of Thrones, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Like Osdor. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great name. Hodor. I love that name, that's fantastic. Marcos has greetings to Maggie from her, his daughter. Hey, Osdor. hello. That was Marcos, was Marcos, it? Marcos. Marcos, hello to you and your little daughter. Hi, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, great stuff. Let's dive into it though. Uh, Martin, yes. drum roll please. We do a tummy drum roll. Ready? It will be there. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is the news. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, there so let's dive into the news. Um, that's what I often do uh, when I'm teaching, and um, sometimes you want to sort of get. You're playing a game and some of the children want to go quickly and they want to do it and they want to get onto the next one, but not everybody is watching. Mm -hmm. I like to do a tummy drum roll. All right. Um, it's, it's very easy for me to do a tummy drum roll because my tummy, my drum is rather large. So I'm able to, uh, to do a big tummy drum roll and you get all the kids doing a tummy drum roll and then you reveal the card or you mm -hmm. show the picture mm -hmm. and that way you can make sure that everybody is looking, you've built up the suspense yeah. and then you go. So uh, tummy drum rolls then can be great. Right. Actually, I've I'm watching myself doing a tummy drum roll. I need to sit better like this. Yes, yeah, so it's posture. You're like a fit man. Okay, yeah. I'm trying. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that I'm trying. Uh, we have one of those uh, cross trainer yeah, yeah, yeah. jogger trainer, things. Yeah, yeah. That's the one, yeah. It sort of looks like I'm running in slow motion, but I'm sweating like I'm running at full speed. <laughs> It's not glamorous, <laughs> but if you want to see a different side of Steve and Maggie, you could go on to my Instagram feed and you can see me uh, jogging and running away. So I'm trying, I'm trying with it. So, uh, but anyway, there we go. Uh, let's dive into the news. Uh, what have we got? Uh, what's first on our list? Uh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Um, if you subscribe to Wow English TV, if you click on the like, if you, if you like some of the videos, if you click on like, if you subscribe, that is a really big way to help. Everybody says it because it's true. And, okay, we're all gonna do tummy drum rolls now. So, <laughs> come on, Eddie, are you ready? Tummy drum roll. Oh nearly one million subscribers. Wow. Nearly, nearly, yeah. okay. nearly, nearly. It's going close, it's going um, close. Yeah, and I mean, Wow, just just wow, English TV. Um, <laughs> wow, it's amazing that I, we're sitting here even considering that we're getting close to a million, million subscribers. Yeah. Uh, and we love each and every one of them. Yeah. Uh, and each and every one of you that are joining of us course. here on the live stream. So YouTube is uh, is going pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, uh, sorry. Yep. Oh, yeah, Martin. Martin, you're very fast. Wow, he's commenting on our. Yeah, video, he right? said, if you enjoyed the live stream, please feel free to share. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he's the man of a thousand uh, characters typing, yes, not characters a thousand words. And, no, not really, but hands and brain. Yeah, is amazing. they're all connected. <laughs> they're all connected there. Mm -hmm. And this is Martin's work, of course, um, to sort of uh, just get in touch and reach out to different people uh, on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, our Facebook is doing uh, doing pretty good. What, what, how many followers are we on now? Thirty-one thousand, isn't it? That's not bad. Oh yeah, I can sit back and relax with the sort of, you know, thinking, okay, that's You're good. You're not such a person. You have You're to hide this from me. It's not, yeah. it's not enough just to take it away. You're nervous. Like you know, with um, with the kids, you know, if you sort of like take it away, but uh, it's not far, it's not out of sight, out of mind. It has to go out of sight, out of All mind. Right. I'm just fidgeting with my pen now. It's, I'm terrible with that, but uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, Facebook's doing well. Thank you for uh, for following us on that. Um, Instagram, we're doing pretty good. Um, yeah, it's about 17, um, 1,700. Seven, yeah, 1,700, yeah. 1, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which is amazing. You know, yeah. the fact that, because uh, it was Martin that pushed me to start doing Instagram. Mm -hmm. I said, nobody's really interested in sort of what happens, you know, from a day to day mm -hmm. sort of basis. He said, no, no, you, you know, people are interested. Reach out to them. They want to see you sweating on a jogging yeah. machine. And <laughs> apparently they do. Yeah, um, exactly. People do want to see me sweat. 1700. On, on, come on. Yeah, which it's is, number, which is not it? bad. So, you know, thank you to each and every one of you. <laughs> I do try to uh, to get in touch to reply. Um, you know, if you sort of like say something, if you comment, I try just to, uh, to say hi. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. other one we got is Amazon Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime is, I think, doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this was what, 105,000 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they streamed in last 12 weeks, uh, though. Come well, on, that's it. That's time. it. In 12 weeks. In 12 yeah. weeks. But I'm just, I'm just curious that uh, the person that actually <laughs> got to, you know, 105 and <laughs> stop. You know, it's not, it's not 105,000. You know, yeah, and yeah. 21 minutes. <laughs> it's sort of, uh, it's like that. But, uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, and uh, the last thing is probably uh, Patreon. Yeah. It's not on your list. No, not even. It's not doing very well. Yeah, not, so. really, not really. Not really. Um, What's wrong? We, I try to post some things yeah. up on Patreon. I'm trying to get uh, that sort of thing going. But it means that uh, Martin can buy a nice new shiny light yeah. um, for <laughs> his um, his setup here in the studio. It means we can continue to do what we want to do. And that's because of you. And I can see that uh, we have got a few people. Uh, yeah, Steve, can we you have, uh, oh, yes. We have some uh, greetings from Hong Kong. Greetings Fantastic. from Vietnam. Excellent. 
Schneider. Greetings from Poland, I think, again. So marvelous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've got Steve. Can you show, show me? Show me some books. Yeah, show me some books. Uh, I I can't do it now. Um, although we do have some some things here. But please go to WowEnglish.com. Yeah. That's where you can um, you see a see lot about sure. the the Wow English materials. Um, so talking about uh, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, talking about Vietnam, yeah. and talking about um, you know this amazing thing that the internet is, which is a global tool mm -hmm. to sort of like reach out to to people. Um, we've been doing okay, haven't you? You've been sort of like working with uh, yeah, people upstairs on the expanding and master franchises. Do we have any new master franchises? I think we have quite many. It's yes. from Italy, it's from Israel, and it's from Korea Excellent. even. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I do know about Korea. Korea yeah. is an interesting thing. If you're in Korea, hello to you. <laughs> uh, our CEO, um, it wasn't me, I was stuck in the studio. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get out. I, I never get out. <laughs> although I did have a holiday, so I, sh yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> I can't complain. Um, although I spent most of my time trying to avoid the yeah. sun. You yeah. know, sort of like uh, <laughs> just sitting underneath trees and umbrellas. Um, but uh, yeah, we've partnered um, with a very interesting company in Korea. Okay. Uh, they're not not specifically a school, mm -hmm. but what they do is um, they're a, they have a technology okay. where you can watch a, a clip, mm -hmm. a Stephen Maggie clip, and you can record a child All right. and put them directly into the clip as well. That's great. So that's quite an, an interesting thing to, mm -hmm. to see and do. So we're um, expanding globally in that way and, cool. uh, and we're, moving, we're moving forward. So it's going to be an interesting thing. Um, I just have to stop for one second mm -hmm. though um, because I know that we have Liberetska, Yazikova, Shkolka uh, mm -hmm. that are watching now. They have a parents meeting okay. right now. So we can Hello. wave to them. Hi, Hi. how are you doing? You right? <laughs> and uh, Liberetska, Yazikova, Shkolka is quite interesting for us. It's right. one of our oldest partner schools. Right. They've been using the What's English method uh, for uh, it's over 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've been using all the books mm -hmm. um, for at least sort of like four to five years. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, they're adding to it. Um, that it's a it's a kindergarten where they use our um, Wow books as okay. the the main structure of the mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But they see the children every day yes. with a native English speaker. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, if you're seeing the children every day with a native mm -hmm. English speaker. Of course, the books are designed just for the children to be doing something maybe once or twice, twice a week, a week yeah. uh, not more. So the teachers there are really then pulling in lots of additional resources, yes. a lot of extra materials. Yeah. Um, we post a lot of extra materials on YouTube and all over the internet. Yeah. Um, so what the teachers there are doing are putting all the things in as well. So uh, thank you. Uh, it's great that you can join us. Uh, that's Liberetska Yazhikova Shkolka. And, uh, you know, take care. And <laughs> we look forward to, to seeing some more things. So I just wanted to say like a, a quick hi there. So it's, uh, have we got anybody else? We can't just focus on them. Who yeah, else have we got to say hi to? Francesca Miko, hi, good afternoon, she Francesca, says. Francesca, hello to <laughs> you, hi. Then somebody's commenting that Maggie's voice is sometimes difficult to listen to. Yes, yes, it is. Um, Maggie is a magpie, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. magpies, they do have a very irritating voice. Yes. I've <laughs> talked to Maggie about, you know, can she maybe just take off the, the high pitch? Yeah. She can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't want to ins offend her. She might just fly away and she not might, come uh, back. Come on, don't fly I away. I know. Maggie. So, um, you know, of course, she is very, very naughty. Uh, she <laughs> does do a few, uh, a few of these naughty things. And uh, yes. she can be slightly irritating. <laughs> but the feedback we get from the children is that the children really do enjoy and love, yeah. you know, love Maggie and it helps more than me. Which yeah. makes me very sad. Yeah. Not very sad. sad. No, very jealous, I think. Right? Jealous, yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, so hello uh, from Tokyo. Konnichiwa, who have we got in Tokyo? <laughs> Marilyn P. Jilla. It's oh. a very Japanese name, though, isn't it, Marilyn? <laughs> but, uh, Konnichiwa, Marilyn san. Um, hello to you. Um, yes, we're hoping to do some stuff um, over in Japan as well. Mm -hmm. um, these people that we're talking to in Korea mm -hmm. with this interesting technology to make the Stephen Maggie clips very interactive so we can be even more interactive with the children yeah. that are learning English right. with us. Yeah, so that's sure. something to look forward to. Um, Italy and Israel, um, mm -hmm. very exciting. Um, we have um, a new franchise in Lazio. Mm -hmm. I know, go Lazio! You know that? No? Football <laughs> thing? No? Not your thing? The mm -hmm. football? No. Not really. Okay. <laughs> go Lazio! Yeah, you, you get. No? Okay. Either way, uh, that's around the Rome sort of region. And uh, I went to Rome once. 
Um, I was no uh, as, as a tourist. Um, I was robbed uh, yeah. and <laughs> lost all of my uh, clothes, uh, my laptop, and everything else. And I haven't been back, but I really want to go back. <laughs> I mean, I know. Okay, it happens. It happens. You know, it's it just, can happen anywhere in a row. I, I, I was just unlucky mm -hmm. in, in that one, uh, but uh, I would love to go back. Um, and uh, anyway, mm -hmm. there we go. Uh, and we got some new partners as yeah. well. Some new partner For schools sure. like Liberetska Jazykova Szkolka. Yeah. Um, I think it was in Romania, wasn't yes. it? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Germany, friends, and one very exciting one we have a partner in Sri Lanka. Fantastic! So you guys have been working hard. Very interesting. That's, that's yes. good to see. Whilst mm -hmm. I'm locked in the studio, we're, <laughs> we're doing some stuff there. So, it, okay. but not only Sri Lanka, there are partners in India, and I must also mention Spain, where we have a yes. lot of partners. Yes, yes, yes. Really. There's been quite a lot of interest in Spain. Yes. Um, I try to see and read as many comments as I can, and uh, we know that we do have quite a few people that sort of yeah. say, "Yeah, okay, you know, when is Steve and Maggie coming to Spain?" I'm hoping to at some point uh, to pop over, maybe possible. do some shows yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, have a little bit of fun with the kids yeah. there. But there we sure, go. So sure. that was the news. And yes. um, yeah, let's dig into perhaps what we got here. Oh, yes, um, we had uh, Maggie Mail. Yes, there must be some emails from her. But yes. there is one which came to us. Well, Maggie's, I'm just saying, Maggie's been quite busy recently. Uh, not only is she in the studio, but she's also emailing a lot of teachers. Yes. Uh, she's sending a lot of uh, what we call Maggie mail. Okay. Uh, just to sort of like to say hi mm -hmm. to the boys and girls and to hello to the to the okay. teachers. And maybe just to say, you know, okay, there's a, a new clip. She sent one about the new Halloween clip. Ah, true. Yeah, so okay. she sent one there. So uh, that was quite so good. So that's why we got the answer back. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. well, what was the answer? And it was from Diana. Yes. And she wrote us, please say thanks to Maggie for Yay. the email. Thanks, Maggie. <laughs> and please tell her that we support her in playing jokes on Steve. Yeah, I'm sorry, but. Not entirely yeah. happy about that. <laughs> Because but don't worry, Maggie. you see how many times Maggie either drops something on my head or covers <laughs> me in in juice or water yes, yeah, or people love something. It, Steve. Okay, Come on. right, okay, well, that's <laughs> fine. Good, good, good. However, uh, Diana said that they will use the video from Halloween for their Halloween lessons. Excellent. And I think good, good, it good. can be very useful for them. Yes, we're hmm. getting to Halloween, aren't we? Actually, and uh, oh, sorry, there's something just behind you, just down there, and behind you. <laughs> <laughs> No. Hey! I got a scary face. Rah! I thought I might scare you for Halloween. You're not easily scared. Very no, cool. Course, very calm. Uh, so, rah! to you guys. Um, I think this is quite a nice scary face. It's uh, not too scary. Is okay. It? It's, it's nice. not too scary. Um, because we're coming up to Halloween. And uh, we have this new Halloween clip, um, which is a song, okay. and it's a very repetitive song. So it just sort of says, uh, it's a ghost, a ghost, a ghost, a ghost, a ghost, ah! like that. Um, and of course, Halloween is meant to be a little scary, but not too scary. Um, and we were thinking, is this really scary? Is it too scary? Is it not scary enough? Um, give us your feedback. I'd love yeah. to know you if know. you think it is a little bit too scary, uh, yeah. this new Halloween clip that, that we've got. But I think because it's quite repetitive, Mm -hmm. uh, and it just focuses in on you know five or six mm -hmm. words, just like ghost, uh, skeleton, vampire, mm -hmm. witch, and these sort of things. I think it's going to be a, a a great song that the kids can do in their Halloween uh, plays or Halloween. Um, you know, so, uh, again, coming back to to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh they said that they were going to use this in um, their Halloween show. They All have right. a Halloween evening. Okay. Uh, the kids sort of. Um, basically uh you know put on a little performance okay. uh, for the parents but there's lots of very very little children mm -hmm. and of course you know a song where it's got lots of new words when you're still you're trying to teach your your target language mm -hmm. of october okay and halloween is in the way yes then if you have a lot of extra vocab to cover it might be too much yeah. um so i think this one could be a, a fun way yeah. um, to sort of uh, to 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 you know to enjoy that right. um so yeah halloween is kind of coming in i wanted just to to spend a little while because um in your halloween party uh, i just wanted to share some experience that i had uh, of course if you go into a kindergarten thank you very much <laughs> yeah, very sly you see how she took that uh, yeah, okay. um if you go into a kindergarten or even like an early primary class and you're dressed uh, maybe as a vampire or a witch or something, it can be quite scary uh, for the little ones, you know, and it, I mean, I, I went in uh, dressed as a clown okay. and I thought, okay, a clown will be great. You know, it's sort of like I can come in and, you know, I'm a clown. Scared loads of children just started crying, you know, because 
they were sort of like expecting maybe Steve or this, you know, it looked like me, but it was, but it wasn't. And, you know, they got quite, uh, quite, quite worried about yeah. it. So I developed uh, just a way of, of doing some show where you actually dress up as a crazy character or a scary character. Mm -hmm. And I would strongly advise that you get dressed with the children. Yeah. So you can take in your costume, you can go through the parts of your costume, you can tell them what it is, and you can drill that language, which is what we talked about uh, last, last month. Time, yeah. We talked about parroting and drilling, so taking the opportunity to teach from that. Mm -hmm. You can introduce more language if the children are a higher level. So perhaps it can be texture, you know, that something mm -hmm. is rubbery or slimy or it's, you know, so, yeah, mm -hmm. scary, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So you can introduce all of this extra vocab, which is what we did in a live stream many moons ago. <laughs> and um, when you actually then just go through and you put the costume on with the children, then when you say, OK, let's play a game, then the children are not quite so scared. Yeah. You know, they're sort sure. of like accepting. They say, OK, I know it's you in a silly costume. Yeah. The other side of that is that um, I went into a class dressed as a different character and the children said, it is you, it's Steve. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I am, you know, maybe clown like uh, yeah, yeah, a clown or whatever. They said, oh, Father Christmas especially. You know, so, oh, 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 I'm Father Christmas. <laughs> you go, no, you're Steve. I said, no, I'm Father Christmas. <laughs> oh, oh. And, uh, of course, the first thing they want to do is prove mm -hmm. that it's you. So pull the beard off, pull the hair, mm -hmm. uh, maybe tug at the costume mm -hmm. a little bit. And, of course, you know, costumes are difficult to sew back together, etc. Um, so... Um, I found that if I got dressed in the classroom, mm -hmm. first of all, I could use it as a resource, as a great way to introduce some new mm -hmm. language to keep them focused. And I could also then actually get on with it mm -hmm. uh, rather than trying to prove that it's just Steve in a costume. Yeah. So, um, sure. you know, so just, idea, just yeah. some hints and tips about Halloween. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so hopefully there's something interesting there. Scary mask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There should be some more things coming yeah. uh, on Facebook. Um, Michelle is working hard uh, putting together her online game bank, mm -hmm. um, which is posted on Facebook. Yeah. If you've missed some of those, they will be posted on YouTube under the What's English yeah. channel. All one word. My surname, mm -hmm. uh, Steve Watts, W-A-T-T-S, mm -hmm. English, not what is English, What's English. Uh, search for us on YouTube there. Sure. Um, we're continuing to do the Tea for Teachers. Yeah. So that's me. Um, when I'm talking about uh, answering your questions, uh, we post those up every uh, week on Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Halloween, uh, we're putting on lots of different things there. And yeah. I talked about using costumes mm -hmm. and uh, just getting the children ready for Halloween to say. It's going to be here. Especially the small ones. Just say, you know, it's me in a costume. Yeah. You know, monsters aren't real. You know, they're just, mm -hmm. this is when the children dress up, adults dress up in scary costumes. Yeah. You know, so we push on with that. It's good to do so. So we've done a lot of live streams. So far, uh, yeah. I'm not sure how many we've done now. Uh, what's this one? We're on... It's, it's been like eight. Yes, yeah, so we've had about eight. Yeah. Um, we've covered lots of different topics. Um, again, the back issues are up on um, the, our YouTube channel, What's English. But what are we talking about uh, this month? Let's find out. Let's find out uh, with Martin, please. Martin, Drum roll. What are we talking about this time? <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't sustain that. Uh, we're talking about classroom, classroom management. management. Yes. yes. Actually, Big what topic. is what is it? Classroom management. Well, this is it. It's uh, it's many different things, um, and classroom management becomes such a big topic mm -hmm. with so many different things to cover that, in many ways, we can't really narrow it down. Yeah. And we start off talking about one particular point in classroom management, and we go off uh, talking about maybe discipline and control or talking about something else. So what I want to do here is I really want just to slim it down a little bit and I'm just going to talk about three different things. Things. Okay. Over to Martin. <laughs> okay. You made him jump there. He was sort of like. Uh, so the three things that uh, I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about what we are not okay. talking about. Um, so what we're not talking about. I also want to talk about um, the uh, all. Uh, I'm trying to read. All about class. <laughs> Martin, you did a very good job in holding it up. Um, but uh, it's, I'm trying to read it mirrored and back to front. All the things about the class. That's yes. it. Okay. You read the script. Great. Okay. I'm going to talk about all things 
things to do with the class. I can do it now. Uh, now I can see. And what, what to plan, plan for. Um, <laughs> so, what I want to do here is uh, just talk about um, how we can plan for mm -hmm. good classroom management. We're not talking about in the class when you need to respond to um, a naughty child or the children becoming too loud as the whole class. Mm -hmm. We will discuss this. Mm -hmm. We will have a, um, you know, a live stream based on this. But I just want to hold it back a little bit and say, okay, at the planning stage, let's try to put into our lesson plan just a couple of things that help us to plan for good classroom right. management. That is the key. So we're going to talk about uh, what this discussion isn't is about? Mm -hmm. and I think I've covered that I'm saying that it is not about uh, discipline and control mm -hmm. we will come on to that um, in a little bit mm -hmm. but there is one big question um, when we're talking about teaching uh, and it's one big thing that you find that uh, my experience of mentoring new teachers, mm -hmm. um, doing workshops and seminars where we're sharing ideas with more experienced teachers okay. is that Typically, we do tend to get into this problem of thinking about what is a class. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, we say, um, you know, you can say, oh, I have a real problem with uh, class 3B. All right. Mm -hmm. And it's very quick and easy for us to do that as teachers. I, I, I do it myself. I sort of say, oh, God, my Monday you know, afternoon class 3B. Oh, they're a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I don't like teaching them. And we're perhaps starting with a slightly negative attitude there, but of course it might be justified because sometimes, you know, oh, <laughs> there is a class that you really find it difficult to yeah. work with. Um, but what is a class? A class is a collection of individuals. Yeah, that's true. And it's quite a strange and unusual situation. Because typically we tend not to think of, um, you know, it's very rare that we get a group of people together and we expect them all to act in the same way yeah. and to all respond to the same uh, games or, you know, activities in the same That's way, way yeah. mm -hmm. to maybe approach an activity in the same way yeah. and to respond in that way. Mm -hmm. And very, very quickly, us as teachers, especially, uh, put my especially. teeth back in, <laughs> And especially, as you <laughs> prompted me, uh, especially, uh, now I've forgotten completely what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we expect your that it will be the teeth. same. My teeth, I was talking yeah. about my teeth, thanks about it. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to keep on topic desperately. Uh, but uh, no, especially when um, we are more experienced, we do have a habit of grouping uh, the class together. So. Yes, a class, uh, we can say this class I'm not having uh, much luck with, but we do need to start from the very beginning. As soon as we're saying, okay, I'm going to plan a lesson for this class that I have trouble with, do remember they are a collection of individuals and uh, we need to maybe isolate perhaps, you know, what is happening in this group. Yeah. Um, I had a problem, mm -hmm. a really big problem with a class that I taught on um, Wednesday afternoons. All right. And uh, on Wednesday afternoons, um, they were just a little bit slow, a bit sluggish. They didn't really want to play the games and the activities that I had planned for them. And I was thinking, well, why? And I was discussing uh, with my, uh, my ADOS, the Assistant Director of Studies, mm -hmm. with the school I was working for at the time. And first of all, he said, OK, well, let's narrow it down. What we came to was the fact that uh, the English class was immediately after um, lunch. Ah, okay, so they were sleepy. Yeah, apparently. they were full. <laughs> and they were kind of like... <laughs> and of course, you know, I was do doing my, my thing, saying, okay, you know, let's go, let's run, let's run, let's jump, let's jump, let's do something like this. And we started quite well, and then soon they were sort of like... <laughs> I think their, um, you know, their lunches were just going around like a washing machine yeah. inside them, and they were sort of like thinking, oh, okay. So I changed the approach, and my start was just a little bit slower. It wasn't quite so... Ta-da! In your face, let's go, go, go. I just started a little slower um, with something that say, OK, um, let's do... I think I started... One of my favourite games was a list race. OK. So I said... Because I usually started... I used to love starting with the game Touch. Mm -hmm. uh, so, OK, touch the window. Yeah, the window. Touch the door. OK, touch the door. And then I said, OK, well, let's now just list all the things that you can see mm -hmm. or list all the animals you know. Mm -hmm. And it was just a little bit more sitting down. It gave them about, like, five minutes just to let their meal go down and then they could go mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. so um 
it brings us perhaps onto the list of factors that can influence mm -hmm. the class or influence the mood of yeah. the class. And I want to spend just a little that. time thinking about this. So um, we'll throw it open All a right. little bit. Okay. So can you just uh, type in, uh, throw in one or two things that you think might influence a class or might uh, change the mood of the class. Mm -hmm. um, editor has pre-prepared yes. a lovely little envelope uh, where she's got a few things um, that I will try to classify as to whether I think it is something to do with the teacher, okay. something to do with the students, okay. or something to do with the room, the classroom, the classroom that you're itself. teaching in. Okay. But, uh, yeah, let's just see if uh, who's... Uh, Nobody's responding. Doing. I think it's a little bit delayed. It is, it is a little bit. So, a little bit so we'll see. So you can throw one or two at me. You guys okay. can throw one or two at me. And, and, we've uh, and we're trying just to discuss a little okay, bit. Okay, so that. I'll so. pick one from this little and low. Tummy drum rolls again. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, what do you think about the use of paralinguistic features? Yes, Ooh, we will come on what to are this. Paralinguistic features. Paralinguistic features. What is it? Um, it's something to make you sound incredibly educated <laughs> when all you're doing is just waving your hands in the ah, air. All right. <laughs> um, that's what it means. Um, paralinguistic features simply means um, something that is non-linguistic mm -hmm. and it's showing something with right. your hands. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think this is key to perhaps understanding. Mm -hmm. And um, my mum, who was a teacher and gave me the advice never to become a teacher, <laughs> uh, said that her headmaster uh, told her that uh, if, if she cut her arms off, my mum's arms off, she couldn't teach. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, you can't write on the board, that's definitely yeah. true. Um, but I think what, what he was going for was not the literal analogy okay. of that one. Yeah, how are we doing? Oh, we've got more maybe comments I, coming up there. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. do you want to hold it maybe like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. And you can show me if there's something that, yeah, yeah. that crops up. Mm -hmm. um, so um, basically expressing yourself with the hands and so, you know, mm -hmm. come here, sit down, listen, mm -hmm. stop it, you know, repeat with me, all of these sort of things. Um, giving these, I think it's something to do with the teacher. Yeah, and of course, there are, there are days where, as a teacher, you're a bit tired and to, don't want to get the energy to wave your arms around or at least to show what you mean through paralinguistic features yeah. can be something that, uh, that maybe um, could be helping the, the class to understand. Yeah. And if the children are not really understanding or you're not helping them understand, mm -hmm. uh, obviously you're using a, a different language, mm -hmm. but if you're not helping them to understand through mm -hmm. paralinguistic features, then I think that that could contribute to the class For maybe sure. not understanding. And if they don't understand, they start to act up and they do something else. So I'd, I'd put that down with teachers. Have we got it in the teacher, the use yeah, of paralinguistic features? Yeah, I think features? so. There. Ta-da! Paralinguistic features. So on my list, there. paralinguistic <laughs> features. Okay, so, let's yeah. pick one more while waiting for the other comment. Yes. So. Okay, I'm not watching. And there we go. We Ta -da. Have Size. What do you think about the size? Size, size, size of, of the, the teacher. teacher. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it's very good if you want to play a drum, <laughs> drum, <laughs> drum roll. But uh, I think perhaps. Uh, oh yeah, we've got. Like we've got like. Covering yeah, us. yeah. So uh, if it's a cozy, I, this is to do with the classroom. Yeah, for sure. Um, there are so many different sort of classrooms. Um, some of them are huge, mm -hmm. and they're really echoey, mm -hmm. which can make it difficult to uh, to understand or difficult mm -hmm. to listen um, to the class. It can be something that uh, if it's cramped. If mm -hmm. all the children are, you know, if you've got too many children in a small classroom, that can, it means that you have to approach your lesson yeah. in a slightly different way. And this is what we're talking about at the planning stage. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, this class, I know well, I have a big group of children, they're in a small classroom, so I can't do this, or I need to do this in a different way. Yeah. So at that planning stage, mm -hmm. I think that's where we need to sort of like think, okay, this will, my classroom um, does doesn't me it doesn't facilitate this game very well so I'll maybe adapt it I'll change it um, perhaps you do groups you just get one or two volunteers um, coming from it yeah. so I think these sure. these types of things so uh, yeah I put that down into the classroom uh, your classroom um, how would you describe your classroom uh, just give us one adjective cozy uh, cavernous um, empty I hope it's not empty, <laughs> it's not empty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hope you have some children that come yeah. to your English classes you can be comfortable so, even yeah yeah comfortable yeah yeah, and you know. um, maybe too comfortable. Um, <laughs> if it's too comfortable, maybe you know the kids are sort of you know, they, yeah, they don't <laughs> want to get going. Um, so again, we have to think about these things at the planning stage. Planning this is where we're going sure. into it. Let's pick out one more. Well, okay. Have I we got any? Up. 
coming in. Well, not yet. Not yet. Maybe it's still delayed. Let's We've got see. Uh, Anna. Hi from Barcelona. Yeah. I've been watching the news in Barcelona um, mm. about the uh, the referendum there. Yeah. I mean, you know, phew, there's a lot of th Quite crazy of things going on in the yeah. world at the moment. It's uh, yeah. okay. What about film but, uh, progress? Uh, yeah, class. film progress. Do you think it's more teacher or more children? I'm going to go with both here. I, I think, think it's so. I think it's both. Um, that if the teacher doesn't feel like they're making progress with the class uh, on many issues of classroom management, then I think that that can then come into this sort of like uh, how you you go into the lesson. You know, if you're if you're a bit frustrated or a bit bored or a bit uh, you know, it's it's. It's very difficult, of course, to go into a class where you are having management issues yeah. and you're trying not to show <laughs> that you don't want them. Right? Yeah, that you're sort of like feeling frustrated with them yeah. or, you know, tense with them or that you're not making any progress with them. Um, but, I, of course, you know, we do need to do that. You know, every new, every new lesson is, is a new start and it's not easy. Um, but uh, maybe at that planning stage, you know, make that mental note to yourself that, you know, you're not going to show that um, you're expecting a repeat of last mm -hmm. last uh, last week or, you know, however it goes. But of course, the students as well, if the students feel like they're not moving forwards, if yeah. it's going too slow for them. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Excuse me, I put my teeth back in again. <laughs> they're constantly <laughs> slipping at the moment. Um, if the students feel like it's going too slow or if it's going too quickly. You know, so just take a little time at the planning stage to think about your class as a collection of individuals mm -hmm. and think, OK, am I moving too quickly? Am I moving too slowly for, you know, not just the class, but for the individuals in the class? So, and yeah. I think there is one more that um, will be connected with individuals and that's being listened to. Yes, yes, I think so. So, you know, if, if the kids think that they are being listened to, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that you are... Um, adapting and you are meeting them a little yeah. bit you know yeah. obviously you are the teacher you're in control and you are the one that you know that is taking the lesson yeah. in a particular direction um, but if they do feel that they're being listened to that there is some development there um, then yes I think that's, that's key sure. there are many many yeah, different already. factors um, that can lead into uh, to the class if we look at say just just the classroom not talking yeah. about teacher but just the classroom the seating arrangement are they sitting in rows? Are they sitting in groups? Um, do you have an area where you can go to the carpet and you can introduce something and then have an area where you can move? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but how will you use those areas can dictate the mood of the class. Sure. Um, the arrangement of other furniture, you know, can everybody see the board? That comes yeah. into sight lines. Can everybody mm -hmm. see? Can everybody hear? Mm -hmm. um, the equipment, um, you know, if we've got, uh, if we give the children lots and lots of scrap paper all the time, or a black and white photocopy, do not, don't, you shouldn't be photocopying any of Nothing. the books. They're all copyrighted, so don't photocopy <laughs> any of them. Um, it's one of the reasons that, of course, you know, we we print the books, we print many books, so that we can reduce the cost. And they're colourful, they're interesting, you know. So do they have, you know, their own nice book, not just like a black and white grey photocopy? Yeah. That's not going they to won't be get them. It's not going to get them involved. Yeah, sure. um, the physical atmosphere is it too hot is it too cold do you need to open the window do you need to you know have some fresh air have some fresh air yeah. Yeah. or is it too cold and you know they're sort of sh shaking, shaking and shivering <laughs> and turning blue like a smurf if you're teaching smurfs and they've all turned blue then you know that definitely it's that's a classroom tradition um decoration you know does it look nice very often english lessons are in um this spare classroom yeah, it's true. It's the area that, that nobody, nobody really wants to go there. knows about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so perhaps you could just have, um, you know, uh, maybe just like a big sheet. Um, if you're if you're artistic, you know, draw some things on, you know, just go into the classroom and just maybe hang that up yeah. uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer, you know, a little bit more sort of like, well, this is well, a coming. respected space, mm -hmm. which very often for extracurricular um, English lessons, uh, it's typically not. Um, it's just the forgotten spare classroom. Yeah. You can go there and, you know, be noisy and do yeah, your loud do drilling. You like. But, you know, if you've got a, a, just a little piece of fabric, it's easy just to fold down mm -hmm. so that you can carry it around. Just pin it up, make it feel like it is there. It's your classroom. It's their classroom. Yeah. You're together with it. Sure. Um, on the teacher, there's the rapport. Uh, there's your voice. You know, um, are you speaking too quickly? Are you speaking too slowly? These are things to think about at your planning stage. Um, your appearance. 
Um, if you look like you're tired, um, often it's not always easy to do, but if you look like you're, you're tired, you're not interested, they will pick up on that. Yeah. Um, your like your attitude, yeah, isn't it? indeed. So it's it's all of these things uh, for the students as well. Do they feel part of the group? Um, do they feel like what they're doing is useful? Mm -hmm. This is one thing that we've tried to do on our social media, and the fact that we have a real face in the books. There's uh, there's real Steve yeah, uh, who's right. here. Um, that the children can feel it's a real language. You can talk to us on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, through YouTube comments. We try to reply to you so perhaps you can say to the kids okay well you know let's uh, say hi to Steve and you can show Steve and Maggie the fact that you have learned these words and you right. can say them um, either Maggie will reply I'll try to reply or at least you know just uh, the thumbs up and say hi mm -hmm. thank you so you know seeing this I think that's a big thing um, that we can work with with teachers definitely on, so. it's useful and there is even somebody asking you in the comments that yeah. the, the students are sometimes asking the teacher to call you to yes call <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you say hi um, we've had one or two people call me uh, yeah. via Facebook. I don't pick up um, the calls. Usually I'm in the studio and I just can't. Um, and of course, if I pick up one, I should pick up many. More, um, yeah. But I do try to occasionally uh, reply with a voicemail. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you post up something um, and uh, I'll reply with it with a voicemail, or give a message or a shout out. Um, we're trying to be as interactive as possible, but of course, you know, I can only do so much. And you are just one. Uh, I'm trying to clone. Like almost trying, one million followers. Trying to clone so. myself. So it's. Uh, we'll see how we do. Um, yeah. So uh, we've talked about that. Um, we talked about the types of learner. Yes. As well. There is, um, as many of you will know, mm -hmm. of course, there are, I think it's seven... Um, seven types, yeah, yes, originally. Seven types of learners. And this is something that um, was used a lot. It's since been discredited because I think we, we know as teachers that we might have a way that we feel that we are good at learning. Mm -hmm. um, and we might think for myself, mm -hmm. I, I would put myself in the box of being a kinesthetic learner. A mm -hmm. kinesthetic learner is somebody that needs to move yeah. around. Yeah. If you want me to remember something, then give me the piece of paper and tell me to walk around the classroom as I am trying to remember it and I'm more likely to remember it. But this is the problem with these types of learners. Sometimes we made that box a little bit too strong. Yeah. Because, of course, I might be kinesthetic, but I do need to see the things. I, I am quite visual, mm -hmm. so I do need that visual support. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little training in sort of um, science and, right. and mathematics, mm -hmm. so I, I like to think I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> scientific and logical. Not always. Right. <laughs> Not always. But I think all of us are a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, so what I would say about the classroom management, at the planning stage, when you're looking at your class, a collection of individuals, pick out one or two individuals that perhaps you think are maybe the, the root of uh, where the, the class might go away from where you want it to go. And do try to think about what, what type of learner you have there. Perhaps you're trying to sit them down to do a, a crossword or something, which mm -hmm. is a very sort of, um, uh, it's, it's a linguistic for, for activity. Linguistic type, yeah. mm -hmm. That is a linguistic activity. And if you're trying to do a crossword with somebody who is a bit more kinesthetic, yeah. then perhaps you can say, okay, well, just get up, go to that corner and try to do a bit and then sort of like give them the freedom to, to move around. So mm -hmm. I'd say, you know, pay attention to the types of learners, but don't pigeonhole the learner. No. Don't say, okay, this child is this type of learner. No, it's not and possible. yeah, I think we're all different types. And of course, your lesson should have variety mm -hmm. in it as well. Yeah. So, you know, you do need to, 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 to move to, to teaching the whole class yeah. with variety as well. And so, of course, so. you give the children the opportunity to find which type they are yes. actually, yeah. how, what is the best for them, how to learn. Yeah, and it's a, it's a very useful thing. But do remember, again, at the planning stage, that uh, you teachers, uh, we tend to teach in the same style and approach that uh, we are good at learning it. Of course. So, of course, you know, like kinesthetic teachers tend to create more kinesthetic. Art and craft teachers tend to create more art and craft sort of uh, activities. So be aware of what type of learner you are or the, yeah. your predominant characteristics mm -hmm. and make sure that, you know, you are addressing a balance of yeah. activities yeah. in there. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's quite a, quite a big thing um, on that. But uh, there we go. 
So there, there have been quite many discussions about this. So indeed, I think indeed. There's a lot of things on the internet and yeah. a lot of scientific research, and we'll try to pull some things out. Sure. If we see something good, we'll, we'll post yeah. it up. Anyway, when you are planning your lessons, you mm. also need to think a little bit how you will manage the energy because you're yes. supposed to take the control there somehow. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it is your job as a teacher to sort of like to see how the energy, uh, how you can work with the energy. energy. But at the planning stage, when you're picking an activity, you know, not just um, is this a good activity, yeah. but also what level of energy does that activity require? Yeah. Is it something that is going to get the children up, m moving around a lot, or is it something that they're going to be sitting down a bit more sedated? So think about the energy of that activity, but also at the planning stage, think about the, less, uh, the activity before okay. and the activity after. So if you, if the, if you have uh, an activity, you think this is going to be great with the kids, they're going to love it, it's a great game, it, they'll be moving around, they'll be talking and you know in your head when you're planning you go, oh, this is, <laughs> reality might be, <laughs> it different. Might be different um so you have a high energy activity but if the activity before was quite a high energy activity you are in danger there of making the children become hyperactive yeah. because you've gone from a high energy activity to another high energy activity so now they're really ready to, <laughs> and it's going to then be difficult to, to sort of bring them down mm -hmm. um, and the following activity of course you know mm -hmm. so you know do think what follows it so look at that sort of like how these sort of things oh you've managed to do the uh, it's uh, Unwantedly. yeah it's a new part of the iOS this it's uh, <laughs> there we go I need to get that to go away thank you um, so <laughs> Um, think about sort of like how that flows. What I typically say to uh, to, to newer teachers uh, when planning your lesson um, for small children, mm -hmm. start off with something that's quite high energy, okay. and then very quickly do something that is a bit more calm, okay. and then go back to um, a high energy activity. So your lesson almost looks like this okay. in terms of the energy. Yeah. So start high and you're doing this, and finish on something fun as well. The older the children get, the more it becomes like a bit more of a wave. Mm -hmm. you know, so we can have an activity that, you know, it, it's a little longer, but it's high energy. And then they're sitting for a little bit longer and then they're doing something. Right. And of course, then uh, when you get into the teenagers, then you can do this real sort of like roll. Because there are times when you need to focus on something. They do need to concentrate. Mm -hmm. But if you're asking them to sit and concentrate for a long period of time, they're going to become restless. All yeah. of us become restless. Yeah, sure. These guys are getting restless because they've been <laughs> sitting for almost an hour watching us <laughs> as we're sort of like moving yes, around. So uh, yes, we do need to uh, to, to, to push forward. Um, sure. So think of it at the planning stage. Mm -hmm. This really helps with uh, your classroom management at the planning stage. Think about uh, the energy, but you will of course need to go with the flow, man. Yeah. Be cool, go Always. with the flow. Um, of course, you need to adapt uh, your lesson to um, the energy of the, the class. Mm -hmm. And if if they are hyper, if they have a higher energy level, and you're trying to force them, them down. sit down, it's not going to happen. So yeah. you you think, okay, I need to quickly do an activity that is going to get that energy out before yeah. sure. we can actually sit down. So sure. um, there's there's many different things about. Um, at the planning stage being uh, really focused on what your role as the teacher is. So yeah, it takes quite a lot yeah. of time planning this one. Though. It is. To, to think in each activity, what are, what are your aims? What, mm. what kind of character are you playing? Mm. I think we're going to come on to that maybe in a later right. live stream and All we'll right. go a bit more into detail on that. Because are there are certain types, right? Certain roles yeah. that you can take. Yeah, I'm just very quickly, I'm sort of like talking about you. Um, are you a, a participant in yeah. the activity? Yeah. Or are you just a monitor yeah. in the activity? Or maybe are you um, a sort of resource where the children can come to you and you will always supply some new Something. information? Some, mm -hmm. But I think we'll come on to that a, a little bit later because I want to get on to this um, the planning the transitional um, activities. All right. When we change from one activity to the next, mm -hmm. I think it's very important, again, in terms of classroom management, because when you finish an activity, okay. you're, you're involved in the activity, and you think, oh, what, what, what comes next? Yeah. And in that time where you're sort of saying, oh, what comes next? Um, let me just check my lesson plan. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. 
So if you have planned in your lesson plan a transitional activity, okay. uh, then you can seamlessly go from one activity into the next. A great one is just um, playing, say, touch. Right. You know, and you say, okay, so, right, so we finished that one. Okay, so now, please, uh, touch your head. And I, I'm, I go to my lesson plan, touch your head. Okay, touch your shoulders, uh, touch your nose. Okay, and I check what I'm going to do next. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps with the, the older classes, you can sort of, like, say, you know, okay, tidy up in five, four, three, two, one. So they have something to do. There's an activity, mm -hmm. but it's it's not the main activity, it's a transitional activity. So again, in your planning, in terms of classroom management, think about these transitional things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this uh, comes into having a, a list that you can draw from. Mm -hmm. And we touched a little bit on uh, paralinguistic features. Let's, let's perhaps end with paralinguistic yeah. features, because this, yeah. I think, gives you the opportunity to transition. It shows how to, how to pick up, um, yeah. you know, how to change into, into one. And sort it of gives course. you a little bit of time once you yes. don't have to use your voice, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, well, I think it might be difficult for some teachers to choose and to pick the right uh, yeah. paralinguistic feature. Mm -hmm. How would you, for example, how would you say you mm -hmm. know, in a way, how would you express that you want the children to listen to you? Yeah, I think it's um, it's key to be uh, to be consistent. All right. So and not just sort of like in your control of the classroom, mm -hmm. it's not just what you say, it's mm -hmm. what you do okay. that has like control of the classroom. So if every time I'm sort of like do this, mm -hmm. then the children know they should listen. All right. I would of course say it as well, but every time it's sort of like, you know, okay, everybody listen to editor or All everybody right. like everybody listen. So there is an instruction there, but I'm controlling the class, not just with me saying, listen, listen, Listen! Please! <laughs> listen! Well, he's successful okay, in this but, one. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I can sort of like back that up with, okay, listen, mm -hmm. you know, it's time to listen or make that a standardized sort of like gesture that they really get to. to okay, to listen is easy. That's quite easy. Yeah. What about, uh, how would you say a repeat individually? Not all together. Yes. We could see this one, but yeah. individually. Yeah, and this is it. Often you want, the, you want you know, everybody repeat with me, yeah. you know, yeah. and you sort of like, everybody sort of mm -hmm. like say it. Um, we came on to, we did a little bit of this in our drilling on the live stream yes, about uh, this marker. So we've got everybody. So individually, I might say, okay, are you ready? Okay. And I sort of like, maybe like point and show that I want you to repeat. So, right. okay, are you ready to repeat? Okay. You know, and again, keep the language there, mm -hmm. but help them, you know, to really see what is going on. Mm -hmm. And if they know what's going on, what's happening, you're mm -hmm. more likely to have mm -hmm. control of the lesson. I have one more thing for you, which I am not really sure about. What about when you want to say that somebody is almost right, nearly? Yeah, this is often a difficult because you don't want to say yes, but but no, but no. you know, the thumbs up, the thumbs <laughs> down. Um, I often sort of like turn into a motorbike. You know, okay. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and a big one is trying to get them to give more mm -hmm. of the answer, not just yes. Mm. So it's like, okay, well, you know, let's yes. extend the sentence mm -hmm. because this is tends to be like repeat. Yeah. So I say, okay, you know, uh huh. So, mm -hmm. you know, not just yes, but, mm -hmm. you know, and try to push them to give more okay. of an answer and rest. Um, but think right. about uh, your classroom instructions and what paralinguistic features go with it. Be consistent with them, plan them. And when you are planning these key uh, issues, in, as part of your, your lesson planning stage, I think you're less likely to have problems with classroom management. You're still going to need some hints and tips on, um, uh, on discipline and control. We'll look at that uh, next time. But uh, just quickly, have we got uh, somebody? We have one more hello from Barcelona, from Fantastic. Anna. Then uh, Jennifer um, asks here, how do you manage a class of 30, three-year-old, 30? Uh, yes, th 30, 33-year-old kids. Um, it's something we'll come on to as well about like working I with big so. classes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, we're kind of out of time, but yeah. I'll try to maybe approach it in the Tea for Teachers yeah. um, section, so look out for that on Facebook, but perhaps we'll do a live stream, go into mm -hmm. more detail. Yeah, and there was later. one... Uh, thanks for your question. <laughs> there was one from Egypt, Nora. Okay, great. I think she's three, or he is three, and she has a brother Yay. also, and Hello they all love you. Hi, and thank you. And what's English? Good stuff, good What's stuff. Well, as, as with everything, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on this live stream where we've looked at quite a few points on how to 
put classroom management into your planning stage yeah. of uh, the lesson. So uh, if you'd like any more information, you can yeah. email us. Um, Martin now has his concluding Your and almost task. final yeah. handout to hold up. Uh, so you can get in touch with us uh, by visiting wowenglish.com uh, or you could, of course, email us, which is wow at whatsenglish.com. Com. Uh, we also have another email address, which is hello at wowenglish.com. Right. Perhaps if you have a question you would like me to look at uh, for Tea for Teachers, or there's something you'd like us to discuss in the next live stream, you can send us an email there. Or indeed, if your children want to say hello, as we talked about, you yeah. know, they said the kids yeah. want, to, want to be in touch, um, you can send us an email to hello at uh, what's in this email or just with our Facebook page and we will yeah. reply there as there soon as possible. Can okay. my fidget spinner back, please? No. Please. No, it's first Go. finish your live stream and then you'll <laughs> no, get <okay>. it. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, I'm off to go and play with a fidget spinner. Uh, maybe uh, do that bottle flip or whatever the next craze is. Thanks very much. Do take care see and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.